did he just say to me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I like 99 the best, or 98. 99 is my favorite. 99 is my favorite, yeah. But I mean, even 98 is still What's up YouTubers, welcome to this week's vlog and you join me at Kimridge Bay over in Dorset. Uh, I got up this morning <coughs> at half past three and drove, it's only an hour and a half uh, from my house, uh, so it's not the end of the world, it's just the fact that the sun rises so early. Um, but I've got a big day planned today, got the whole day to get some stuff done. Uh, I've got, uh, I'm obviously going to video film this video, and I've got some work to do for OPG. Um, so anyway, what I thought we'd do today is some seascape long exposures, um, maybe the odd standardized landscape chucked in um, but yeah I got, a, I got an urge to do some seascapes um, and some if I can find something some sort of minimal long exposures fancied getting out of the woods so what I'm going to do now is get you in the bag get my bag on and uh, let's get down to the beach and see if we can find something obviously there's that classic Kimbridge Bay image. Um, I've never been here before, so I don't actually know where that is. But I'm assuming it's over that side because you always see. Um, I'm going to say Folly or Castle in the back of the images, so it must be around there, the right-hand side of the of Kimbridge Bay from the main car park. Right. I'm have a coffee, but a swig of water. And let's get going. So to my base exposure, I've got my settings dialed, 13th of a second, f11, I'm shooting around a stop under because as we all know, Sony's uh, like to blow their highlights, I think they would like me to, I found person anyway, read slightly different. Um, to what my histogram says. So what I tend to do is shoot to the left. I'll stop under all the time. What I'm going to do is stick a 
ND64 on, which is a six stop filter. Let's see what we get. So we're looking at around six, around six seconds, maybe five. And we'll just go with that. And I've already pre-focused on the, I'm assuming it's like a turret, like a World War II turret. Yeah, six seconds looks good. Just need a bit of water around the bottom of this turret now. And we should get a half decent minimal shot. I should mention, um, I use case filters. Uh, you get a nice handy little case, little leather case, and it's just, just it's just handy. Um, it, it beats grads and carrying around lots of gear. Should be paying attention to my photography and not what's going on there. So I'm basically just waiting for a wave. Um, and you'll find that seascape photography or long exposure photography tend to take a lot of shots because you're always waiting for that perfect timing. So while I'm waiting, I thought I'd just show you the filters that I'm using. I know I've already mentioned that they're made by Case. You get this nice little brown pouch with the, this is a magnetic Wolverine kit. Uh, I bought the Pro kit, I think I bought. So I have, I have a 10 stop, um, a CPL, a three stop, a 10 stop, and a six stop, which is on the camera. Um, yeah, it's just a handy little case. It's well made, it's leather, and you know, it fits in your pocket and you never even know it's there. So, in terms of my image, it's just a case of waiting, really. I've got a shutter speed of around five seconds, which I think is quite good. Um, I might try 10 stop in a minute, but to be fair, that might be the only way a 10 stop. That might be the only way to eliminate these pebbles. Because uh, the tide's not as high as I would like it, um, I'm not getting complete coverage of water on these pebbles. It still looks good actually with a bit of pebbles because they're dark and they're wet um, and I'm not using a polarizer so they add a bit of sheen they've got more dimension. Sometimes when you use a polarizer on wet pebbles yes it gets rid of the glare and reflections but it also kills the the texture and the depth so it's hard to sort of it's hard to make them stand out. We are getting some waves now, actually. I'm also taking images and trying to time it so that I get some sort of pullback on these stones because it adds a bit of movement, which also again creates, kind of like with the reflections, it adds texture, it adds depth, um, it adds a bit of drama and movement to the image. So I'm doing a mixture of both. And around five seconds just looks just looks quite gnarly, so this is my type of seascape photography. I love doing stuff like this. So now I've stuck a 10 stop on, and I'm getting around 30 seconds, and lifting my ISO to 100 instead of 50, is giving me bang on uh, 30 seconds, which is the maximum I can go uh, without using a remote shutter, um, which I don't really want to do. Uh, I think 30 seconds is more than long enough for a long exposure in my opinion. And it's, it's interesting um, the difference uh, 6 and 10 makes. Uh, in terms of, for me, I'm not using a 10 now for a certain look as such, but I'm trying to use a 10 as a way of getting that tide to come up higher um, I'm more likely to get water higher up if I record my image which is basically what we're doing we're recording time um, 
if I'm recording time for long longer than the longer I record time for, the more chance I'm going to get uh, water in and around my foreground higher up. So that's the theory. I'm using it for that purpose, not necessarily uh, for a certain look. Like, say, I was shooting this in a, it was in a lake. I could use a ten to uh, to give the water a slightly different sheen, um, as opposed. So that's giving it a certain look. It would be a tower to use a ten or a six, whereas this is purely just so I can achieve a higher level of water. Um, so what I think I'll do is I'll wrap this up now. I'm going to walk around the beach, see if I can shoot something else. Uh, there's bound to be a lot more to shoot around here. I'm quite down in a sort of dip. Um, the sun is all around me. It's quite high up now. It's, let me just see what the time is. It's 10 to 8, so the sun's been up. The sun's been up, wow, well over, well over an hour now, so nice to get out into the sun and see what else we can find. So I told you we we're probably going to shoot um, something other than long exposure seascapes and this is, this is exactly what this is. Uh, I can't help but utilise the 100 to 400 and really pinpoint some of these rock formations because they are really stunning. The layers of sort of iron that comes out in the rock, you get these sort of orangey patterns along with the chalky sort of slaty um, rock as well in lay like again in layers it's like almost like a rock sandwich um, what I will do a top tip for shooting things like this is um, don't just use a polarizer for reflections and glare uh, a CPL this is a case again I'm using a little handy case Case, case. <laughs> this is a case CPL. Uh, I don't know if it will show you, it's going to pick up my face through. But yeah, it is an amazing bit of kit. Um, and a polarizer will enrich the browns, the greens mainly, uh, but it will give a shot vibrance. And in this instance, it'll work really well bring out some of them reds and some of them darker it'll add more contrast as well to the shadows so I'm gonna pop this on and with the case magnetic obviously they're magnetic so you buy a, a ring a case magnetic ring in this instance I have the uh, 82 mil lens hood magnetic lens hood ring but these still work with the lens hood the new um, rubber lens hoods that case do and then we'll jump into the camera and hopefully <laughs> you'll better see exactly why I've decided to put a CPL on this image. So I've put the polarizer on and it is very subtle. Look at the oranges mainly. And on the left there's a little bit of texture. Sorry, this is one. Mainly the oranges, you can see, sort of down here, and there's a little bit of glare on the side here. You can see it just adds a little bit of contrast, that's not polarised, and that is. So hopefully you can see uh, why I took this image, and why I'm about to take this image, shall I say. I just love the way that the, 
this is on a third and I like this diagonal line and I just like these layers it's all about it's all about shapes textures color contrast um, the addition of the polarizer although very subtle does help and aid me um, there's a little bit of dark sort of from the where the rocks wet in the top left hand corner um, up here um, a little bit of directional ambient light sort of on the side here where I think where the where the chalk is so where the chalk is so um, so bright it does reflect a lot of light um, although it doesn't look the scene looks very flat there is a little bit of ambient light I think I can make this a compelling image in Photoshop so yeah I want to crack on get my setting styled in uh, and then uh, we'll go from there So I'm just checking for focus um, because I'm around 135mm, it's not too bad, but obviously when you're um, using a telephoto lens, you're at the longer end, um, or 100, 100 upwards really, you start to introduce um, compression. Um, well you're, you're not introducing compression, the compression is greater at the longer end of your focal length. So at around 135mm, because the rock's quite in undulated and there's sort of certain areas are closer to my lens than others, I um, have to look out for depth of field, how your lens is reacting to that. So, just double checking. I've got a little bit of softness on the right hand side of my image. And that is just because it is obviously like we said it's close to my lens so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus bang in the middle which gets 80% of my image sharp from the from sort of two-thirds right always to the left so a third of the way in from the right all the way left is all in sharp focus so I focus in the middle and then which then gives me that right hand third vertical third I'm talking about now uh, is slightly soft so I'll take a second shot and I'll just focus on that and then in Photoshop I'll stack them together so another little tip if you are shooting things like this although these are a, a brilliant way to get intimate or even macro shots you do have to think about depth of field and how your lens is reacting to the scene you're shooting so I really hope you enjoyed this week's video um, this place is stunning and I'm here all day like I said at the start of the video, I'm here to uh, do some work for OPG, so if you don't know who OPG are, make sure you check out, I'll put a link in the description. It's an online photography uh, course, uh, well they do online photography tutorials, courses, um, location guides, you know, just basically it's the one place to go where you can learn everything to do with photography. Um, with people like me, Matt, Paul, um, Ian Plant. Um, David Johnson, they're all on there and um, supplying content. It's a monthly subscription or you, play at, you can pay annually as well. And uh, yeah, it's just a brilliant place to go. So if you are interested, you are a beginner, um, then head over to Outdoor Photography. I'll put a link down below and you can check that out. So yeah, I'm here doing some filming for that. Um, but yeah, that side, I really enjoyed making this video. Uh, it's, it's two different images. Um, the first one's a bit very me. Uh, when I lived in Bude, I used to shoot stuff like this all the time. Um, minimal sort of long exposures, shall we say. And absolutely love shooting stuff like that. It's just creative license. It's just off the charts, you know. It's just obviously I know there's still compositional uh, rules, shall we say. But uh, I don't tend to follow them too much. Um, and then you've got this abstract shot like we've just taken and it's just a breath of fresh air to shoot something and be 100% creative, the process from start to finish. Uh, and that's including making this video. Um, I enjoy making the videos and the whole thing is obviously a creative process and the images are no different and so is the video. So anyway, I'm starting to ramble. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I apologise for the hair. Um, like, share and subscribe and drop us a comment down below 
smash that thumbs up, but drop us a comment down below and let us know how you uh, think I'm getting on. Is there anything you think I could work on? Uh, <laughs> I know I'm opening myself up there for slating, but uh, yeah, if there is anything that you want to see or you feel like I could do better, then uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. And I'll also mention workshops. I run photography workshops. Um, everywhere one-to-ones I can take I, I could do a one-to-one -one everywhere come to you come to me uh, but yeah or you will go to the woods anyway tide's going out so let's go and see if I find some more rock formations and uh, I'll see you next week ciao bye for now